Alrighty, welcome back everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Part 2 of the installment of all this stuff. This uh, subscriber, a subscriber actually contacted me if you guys didn't see the first part. Part 2, a subscriber actually contacted me and said that they're moving. They have a ton of stuff they're trying to get rid of. So, uh, here we go. This is the rest of what I'm going to show in terms of what I got out of the house. Uh, there probably will be another time I go back and pick up more stuff as well. Uh, my biggest issue right now is obviously space. I did make some space in my area where I keep my lawnmower with the intentions that within the next couple weeks something has to give uh, and maybe markets will open up or have garage sales or something to some extent where I can actually move this product. So until then we are stockpiling. Uh, let's go through the rest of uh, what we got here. All right. So first thing is first, we have mason jars. Now we'll talk a little about these. I noticed when I just said that I'll talk a little about, about these, I walked away. So uh, we do have some clear, these are called wire top or clear top uh, mason jars. A lot of people call them wire top because they have the wire that goes through the, the top of the jar to hold it down. Um, these surprisingly, I took these out to Phillipsburg not Phillipsburg, Five Acres Flea Market. These sold very, very well for a dollar each. Uh, my kitchen, I have all like just decorative spices all in wire top mason jars. So they are still pretty valuable. Um, here are kind of smaller ones. These canning jars bring back a ton of memories for myself because this is the same kind of jar that I think my grandmother or my aunt used to put jam and jelly in. Uh, it's kind of got the uh, the diamond speckled front on it. So it's definitely bringing back a lot of memories. I don't come across them that often. For some reason, whenever I do come across them, they're always still sealed in the box. So it must have been a thing where people thought they were going to use it. They bought them, they never used it. But two milk crates here of mason jars. Uh, like I said in my first video, I do expect these to be pretty valuable and sought after this summer into the fall. Here we have another mystery box. Oh, this thing feels like it. We have a ton of these. I call them clothesline pins. They're great to keep anything kind of closed. These wooden ones, great for potato chips, whatever it might be. We have, uh, why did these not come to me? These I think are for fabric, I don't know why. rollers to give you a I don't even know this looks like I don't know what that is that might just be metal this bag is also empty it's a cooler bag for cool people all right grab this at Jacktown flea market last year RIP Jacktown flea market spring feel like I'm back in my unboxing days. Speaking of unboxing, I don't know if anyone's seen that guy on YouTube who's been doing like unboxing like every two or three days. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. But he has like 200 boxes of fan mail he unboxes like every day or every other day. Crazy. is that I know what this is holy moly I kid you not the mail truck just the mail, mail truck just went down down for the count I don't know what happened they just delivered mail halfway down the road all of a sudden I just see a mail truck being hauled by a tow truck kind of wild scene I think this is a dehumidifier or at least a trays for a dehumidifier it's got to be a dehumidifier that is my thing. In terms of a dehumidifier for, uh, what's it called? The pride not even called that. For uh, your uh, your vegetables, your herbs, I think that's what that's for. And this bad boy probably goes with that. I don't know, I don't cook, I like pizza, um, and that's pretty much my knowledge with food. Moving on, once again, tons of mason jars. Same like the other box, they're all older ones. They're not with the registered trademark. You've got a ton of mason jars. You might as well call me Taco Mason, because I got a bunch now. 
Mark yard sale on the side. So, who knows? Vintage fondue set. And bam, we're in there. Vintage fondue set, get your little fondue action. It's just, I don't know why, but I feel like this is the most common. Of course, we got a infestation of stinkers. They don't need a stink bug, there's about nine of them. I know she asked me if I had a problem with stink bugs. I do have a problem with stink bugs. Stink bugs, cave crickets, they absolutely stink around here. No pun intended. Um, but I feel like the most common fondue set I ever come across is always the yellow one. I think Catherine Holm makes a fondue set as well. Pretty sought after, that's what the Catherine Holm design on the side. That bad boy there was brand new it looked like. Right. Move this bad boy. It looked like a record case. Another stink bug. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. All right, well, people are just going to have this is actually really nice. Wow, that's a keeper for sure. We have an old tobacco tin. Show up on camera, please. Why? Why is this happening? There you go, you can see it. It's a very nice decorative tin there. This is an old one, this isn't a repro. It says on the side, Buckingham Bright Cut Plug Smoking Tobacco. That goes in the key pile. Seems like an empty case. We have some more pottery. This looks like the top to a bowl, the duck bowl. So the rest of the bowl's gotta be in here. It is, it's right below. So you got yourself a duck bowl. Ooh. Nice older tin as well. Tins are always sought after. Here we have more stink bugs. Stink bugs are inevitable. When you have one, you're gonna have many, and if you have none, you're gonna have them eventually. We have a nice, kind of a decorative box at the bottom. We have a Pennsylvania plate. Some people collect states, Pennsylvania, state that I live in right now. People collect these. Uh, these are, uh, they're pretty cool. It's a little yellowed on the back, but pretty cool. I had someone at the flea market always collected stuff from Florida, so. Very interesting there. I do like that piece. <laughs> what is this? This is new. <laughs> I think that's for like a toothbrush. Apologize for any wind noise. I know you guys are inside, inside in terms of the cameras, but I'm standing outside, so I'm feeling wind. I don't know if it's picking up on camera. We have a bowl, and I want to go through these records. Seems like the rest are just plates. Another empty box. All right, so these look like probably a box of 45 records, which they are. It said Christmas on it, so I'm wondering if these are actually Christmas. What kind of love is this by Joe, Joey D, Jimmy Randolph, Kathy Young, Bobby Darkin, Elvis Presley, that's a good one. Buzz Clifford. Oh, the Elvis back there. So I'm going to have to go through these. I don't know. Oh, there's your case. So you got Elvis over there. You got another Elvis. Is that that one? Follow the dream. 
I don't know. So I wanted to go through these. You got some, some Elvis records. More Elvis up front. Is that Jailhouse Rock? That's a classic. <laughs> the old Jailhouse Rock record. So a little blast from the past here. Records are always hot. It seems like, I know I talked about this and the best things to sell right now on eBay and I said, um, I didn't say stay away from records, I just said now is a great time to sell CDs. And I had a ton of comments that said, uh, you know, where are you talking about? Records are hot. They've always been hot. They haven't gone away. Well, they've been hot for the last 10 years or so. Looks like a whole box of coffee cups. We got Panera Bread. Plastic job where you got a remains of a spider. This one might be a college. No, it's Miami Beach. Miami Beach. So it looks like a lot of coffee cups. The ones that you'd probably use at a, uh, this one's Arizona, like a gas station, get a refill. This one says kitchen bakeware, etc. Got a plastic punch bowl, it looks like. That might be a Pyrex bowl at the bottom. We'll have to see that. This is a pitcher. Uh, yeah, so you got a Pyrex refrigerator set. No, this is glass bake. But it's all clear, so this is glass bake. This is an older one. You got some, oh, these are great for if you own a restaurant, you're doing your cooking in the back. This is your wherever wear, your aluminum wear. I absolutely hate scrapping this kind of stuff because if you're doing any sort of project and you need a little bin or bucket to keep screws or nuts in, bolts, whatever it might be, these are great. So these are a keep life for myself. You got some more bowls on the side, but tons of, tons of these clear glass glass bake Pyrex things. It's a nice array, a lot of stuff. Holy moly, donut shop. Like, I just completely flicked that, uh, that stink bug. If you ever need these for your glass pitchers, I think I used to have, uh, I'd say probably a bag worth of these in my house. Inside one of those blue or clear glass pitchers, bowls. Not coming to be the name of these, but you can get them at the Dollar Tree. They're probably like half the size of this for a dollar. I think they come in a couple different colors. But they're great decora decorations. I think you'd also probably use these in like an aquarium or something. Get yourself a rescue ladder. Don't jump out of the window. One year warranty. Just throw us out the window, you'll be all right. The old rescue lab. All right, this box is labeled vintage. Let's see what's in here. Oh, we got some trinkets. And stuff. It says 1960s. Oh yeah, a little brassware. These are like your uh, your presidents, I think. Definitely not your presidents. They're in your brassware. Little plates, decorative wall hangers. Why is this camera never full? There you go. Not a president, some guy. A little cast iron piece there. I'm thinking this this needs lids. It says made in Japan at the bottom. There's some nice things in here. We have a, what looks like I think a mirror or a fan. Yeah, no, nope, it's a mirror. Plastic mirror, maybe a, I was gonna say a loose light, probably not. More of your cast iron wear. That stuff actually sells pretty good at auctions. This is a little, oh, it's a little wheelbarrow. There's some neat things in this box. Here we go. 
Love that. Like I talked about, I think, in my other video. Little brass guy, little rabbit. I got a duck or something at the uh, rummage sale. I forgot what it's called, like Pocono, Pocono Mountain Rummage Sale. I think that's what it was. Jay, every time I see Jay, he always tells me, if you come across that rummage sale again, and you know about it before I do, let me know. So, I'll try to remember that. We have a ton of these salt and pepper shakers. I mean, they're just got this whole area right here is all salt and pepper shakers. This is actually really nice. Some crystal glasses, probably for your napkin, the napkin holder. Got some photos on the back. It says $15, $20 for the set. Okay, can't even see it. Maybe you'll be able to see it that way. There you go. A set of ships. Looks like a lot of this stuff is smaller salt and pepper shakers. I don't want to take them out just because they might break or because I might not be able to get them all back in. We do have a jar here. This is really cool. This is $20 at some point. East Stroudsburg. Burt Brothers. That's a gorgeous bottle. Why did I say it was a jar? It's a gorgeous bottle. I try to show this like you guys can probably see it, but I know the embossing it doesn't really show well. It's in a purple. That's a keeper. That will go next to my sights bottle that I have up for display. We have, ooh, it might be a, well, I think that's a Scotty. I don't know why I thought that. Like a little mini bank. We have a ton of these tumblers in your wicker or your bamboo covering. So actually a great box. Absolutely love the vintage stuff. Of course, not a problem is always trying to put stuff back. All right, so we still got a couple more things to go. We got the heater as well. Uh, she said she probably used that twice. So we got like four or five boxes and a couple boxes up front. The van is almost cleared out. She also gave me that hand truck, which works perfectly. Uh, it's probably my third or fourth hand truck. But, you know, if you have that, it's a game changer at auctions. It's an absolute game changer to bring one of those. All right, this thing was labeled kitchen, pans, lids, and everything got crossed out. Kitchen's half crossed out, so we'll see what's in here. It is sealed. It is kind of amazing. I probably have five or six box cutters in my garage, in my house. Here I am using a hammer. I don't know what this is. George Foreman Lean Mean Fat Grilling Machine. That's exactly what this is. It's upside down. This looks brand new, and I gotta say, pretty sure you hear that wind, so I'll wait. So anyway, this uh, George Foreman grill looks brand new. I'm gonna keep it for myself. I did pick up one at the auction not too long ago, probably about a year or two years ago. I used the ever-living heck out of that thing. Um, the only issue of it was that it can barely fit one burger on there. So this one, you could probably fit two or three. Fire this bad boy up, and maybe I'll have some hamburgers to go along with my pizza. So that's gonna work. This was a cool piece. Uh, this guy's just, wow, a concrete frog on top. A little decorative frog. Concrete stuff always sells. We have this awesome hanging basket cast iron. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a Dutch oven just missing the top piece. Is there a name on the bottom? There's not. Uh, it has been drilled out, as you guys can see, for a planter. So this thing will still sell. It will just sell as a planter. People will love to do this kind of stuff, and uh, this kind of expedites the process without you having to actually drill the holes yourself. So very, very cool piece here. I expect to... Get a decent amount for that. I mean, you think about what a planter costs at a store. You know, how are you going to find an antique cast iron piece and, you know, already done, already done. Moving along, this box said canning stuff. 
And it's exactly what it is. All the lids, or that's the, uh, the, the bands at least. This is the domes, uh, these are the bands with the lids. We got another one of these guys, filled. <laughs> that's probably to uh, seal it. Eh, maybe that's to hold it. No, that's to hold it. That's to, like if you want to put it into something. Wow. Talk about a collection of mason jars here. If somebody out there can use them, it certainly will be this year. And they got a bunch to choose from. Switch up your tone a little bit. This looks like it's all tools. This guy, don't tell me this is exactly what I think it is. I think this is exactly what I think it is. It's not exactly. This might be a button hole. Yep, that's exactly what it is. The old button hole worker, that's what it's called. Why is this thing shaking? It's for your, to make your, your buttons or do repairs on your buttons. This hammer's gotta go. I thought that was the magnetic or magnetic lint roller that I found. Remember, I paid like a dollar for that at an antique mall. Antique malls. Lol, lol, lol. Those days are long gone. Old level. Get yourself a wooden level. You got a hand drill. This is for, I think, your, your weeds, your leaves, not your leaves, your, uh, your weeds. You have a saw. You got yourself an old telephone. Got an oil can. Get yourself an iron. You gotta get them wrinkles out somehow. And this looks like a tape measure, which it is. 75 foot tape measure. So a bunch of random items in here. This is always good. The vintage stuff always sells very, very well. So somebody's going to enjoy these at the market. All right, so we got like four or five boxes left. All of them seem to be marked vintage. Wow. Got some nice pieces here. It's kind, of, it's kind of got like that musty, moldy smell that like vintage stuff just has, which is awesome. Uh, this is a pipe smoker's kit. Walnut aromic blend. It's old cardboard. You know what the smell smells like. Blending of fine tobaccos has been a Milton family tradition for over three generations. It's in there. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. We have some, I think this is what? For your, uh, like an egg beater, possibly? Or for mashed potatoes, I mean. Got a little saw here. Got this jewelry case, looks like. Yep, nice jewelry case. Oh, came to see it. Nice vintage jewelry case there. Wow, get a workout just using these things. <laughs> Look like the end of pieces of jumper cables. I don't think that's what they're used for. Oh, got a car going by. All right, we have. Oh man, why is it not coming to my name? These, uh, my grandma used to collect these. <laughs> so one of the collections she had, trivets. Is that the right word, trivet? So you got yourself a trivet there. I take everything out because I want to see what's in here, but man, it's going to be a pain in the butt to put this stuff back, I'll tell you that. Oh. What we got here, it looks like another trivet. Matching set. We have some Avon here in the corner. We have a tin. 
very cool looking tin. This one, this one's also pretty neat. It's kind of like a copper, sheet of copper. Well, if you're a dog on a piece of wood. You also have some more brassware. Nice piece of brassware there. Older, check out this guy. An older fly swatter, elect, uh, elect someone sheriff. So this is like a little decorative advertisement piece for your fly swatter. So very cool lot. This might be a piece of a barometer. So wow, this I love the vintage stuff. Uh, it obviously sells very well around here. Like anything, it's how you price it, but at the same time, it's also your buyers. But vintage stuff always seems to sell. Antique stuff, these trivets. So that's a cool lot. Oh, I want to see what was in this blue thing. Feels like lids. Oh, this guy's neat. Uh, it has a date on it. I think it says 1968. Get yourself a little wall hanger, your owl. What is this? Feel like lids. So yeah, these are your silver plate ridged. Uh, I think they're, um, it's not coming to me. I've had a ton of these in the past. There's a whole set of them with your silver plate rim. So, a whole bunch in there. Another box labeled vintage. Oh, this is nice. Sweet grass basket in your wicker. That's kind of cool. Ooh, a lot of these pins. These are good. These are your older ones. It says 50 cents on it. It's probably 50 cents for two or 50 cents for one. Can't imagine being a whole bag was 50 cents. This one, it's some more ceramic. It's a nice piece as well, holding the vase. It's just pure glass. This one is another trivet. It's my grandma actually collected these back in the day. There are a couple things she collected. Uh, just talk a little about my own family's collections. My grandma collected trivets, that's what I remember, and she also collected ice cream scoops. My dad collected hose nozzles and a whole lot of other things. This is actually a really nice box. It's very, very moldy on the front, so it's going to need some work. Has no. We just need some light dusting or light wipe off. This one, turkey napkin holders. <laughs> That's great. They're turkeys, but they're for your napkins. They're napkin holders. In the center, you put your napkin in there. Got an older ketchup bottle. On these sifters. I know people out there collect these as well. So another great box. Looks like the smaller boxes are also napkin holders at the bottom. All right, down to the final two boxes or bins. Holy mackerel. Holy tray plate. This is probably one of the biggest decorative plates I've ever seen. Crazy. This thing has to be 14 inches wide. Doesn't even show up on camera. Very, very cool plate. 
All right, so I had to change the battery on the camera, but I think we got the first plate in. Ow. All right, we got the glove back on. This is just a metal hanger. I have a muffin pan. Another trivet down there. Let's see what's in this guy. Feels like another one of those ceramic. No, we got some milk glass. Milk glass vase, a flower vase maybe. More of these napkin ring holders. These are, uh, there's some crystal glass in there. I see some brass. But a whole bag of napkin ring holders. Whole bag. Nice print. Some fruit. Let's see what's in these guys. That looks like some precious moments. Ceramic. We have a lot of this brown and white wear, as I call it. This one has some uh, vegetables on it, some grapes, pecans, acorns, and like a leaf. Looks like most of this is actually that brown and white wear. You got another one of these. This is, I believe, a canister. You can use it as a canister. Some more milk glass. This one's an apple. A little apple basket. You can probably use this for a lot of things. Uh, sewing is coming straight to my mind. Another canister. Looks like a lot of this stuff is just canisters. We have a cast iron little bucket. And then, of course, some white and red enamelware. I do have some piece on the bottom of cast iron. This guy was only a dollar. Trying to see what the markings on it is. I'm surprised this was only a buck. The only markings on it is B113. There's like some uh, FF five and a half. Surprised this was only a dollar. I'm going to definitely take off that tag because that thing is worth way more than a dollar. But overall, a lot of neat things in this one. We have another porcelain piece, or ceramic. That's what it looks like is in here, as well as a small tin. All right, this is the last bin, the last piece of everything, also marked vintage as well. And this one is absolutely loaded with stuff. Loaded with stuff. Got some needle print up top, some more needle print, more of the smaller cast iron. I forgot what the name of this kind of stuff was, the smaller stuff. Uh, something is bringing up to me that's like Amish something, or I'm not sure. I don't know why I'm thinking it's Amish something. Could be completely wrong. We have some more, which looks like Napco wear. This one does not have any name on the bottom. I have a lot of friends who love this kind of stuff, these glazed over pieces like that. I don't know what you would even call them. Plate! More plate. That's a German plate, it looks like. We have some more plates as well. Oh my goodness, the wasp just landed right there. Could have been bad. These guys are kind of neat. 1992. Got some vintage uh, ornaments. Christmas and holiday, especially Halloween, very, very sought after. Look at that. Wood handle one as well in the green, which is extremely sought after. This one looks like a pitcher. Some more porcelain stuff. For all you porcelain fanatics. Lots of porcelain stuff. I see a lot of trivets as well. It's another trivet. Some more porcelain wear. Something fell off so it might be broken. Yep, there you go, an arm. So that's someone's arm. We'll have to figure that out. These things, extremely hot. I was going to buy one myself at the antique mall. I'm going to just keep this guy. This is your old spool. Probably for yarn in your wood. That's a keeper. Some more porcelain wear. 
Sebastian Collector's Society, 1981. Interesting. There's a clear jar. Another one of these jewelry display cases. All right, at the bottom, looks like we have some more canister style. This one might be another canister piece. So it looks like another canister. This one, oh, another one as well. Canisters on top of canisters. There's also a whole collection of plates at the bottom. And some more, um, more porcelain. So wow, we got a collection here, that's for sure. Nice stuff all around. Very, very nice stuff. All right, so as you see, this is all the stuff piled up, kind of right out here. We have boxes on top of boxes on both sides. My shelf also stacked up pretty nicely. Using that shelf space. That's why, like, if anyone asks me, like, why I don't have shelves like this, you can only fit two boxes on there. Um, whereas, like, here, you can just keep stacking boxes and boxes until there's no more space. Uh, I just don't like the poles because they kind of limit you on what you can also put up there. Because then, you know, find another box on top of there. Might be a little difficult, but overall, very, very cool. Everything stacked up nice and neatly. All right, so that's going to wrap it up here for today's video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Uh, oh, sauce is getting fired up. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's part two of the unboxing. Uh, I will probably do one more video if I do get called back to clean out more stuff. I know she is moving and she had a bunch more stuff she hadn't gone through. Uh, so if she's interested in getting rid of this stuff, I'll definitely be back and pick out more stuff. I'm kind of running out of space, but I think I can make do with probably the next month or so. So we'll see what happens with that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you guys enjoyed it, smack the like button. If you guys haven't seen part one, check it out on my channel. And of course, I'll catch up with you guys next time. Subscri subscribe down below for more treasure hunts. And until next time, have a great day. Keep living a dream. Peace.